Hey guys, Amanda here, today with four tips to share with you for reading a tide table. Uh, first and foremost, little background. Um, instances in which uh, reading a tide table can be useful include for coastal fishing and generally safe navigation uh, when you're paddling in the ocean. Um, understanding the timing of high and low tides can boil down essentially to a matter of safety. Um, for example, even if you're backpacking out on the coast and you really need to find out what time of day you can safely round a headland otherwise deemed impassable due to the high tide. So here are some tide table reading tips. Uh, first, uh, you'll want to kind of um, really deepen your understanding of what a tide table is actually displaying. So that may involve a little bit of studying and, and looking at them yourself um, before actually putting them into use. Uh, tide tables show daily predictions for local times of low and high tide, and as well as the estimated heights of those tides um, in, a, in a tabular, easy to read format. Um, these are different from tide charts. Which tide charts, which is a little side note I wanted to make. A lot of surfers use um, tide charts to help them determine uh, the water levels at different tides. Uh, you'll find that a tide table is a little bit different. Uh, tip number two, uh, once you kind of are com comfortable with your understanding of how to read a tide table, you want to find the right tide table for your designated area through which you'll be adventuring. Uh, a good place to start would be the NOAA's online tool, uh, Tide Predictions. Um, alternatively, picking up a local tide table from a bait shop or a marina. And there are also um, apps you can download to your phone, actually, that feature tide tables as well uh, that may be worth looking into. Uh, third, you'll want to narrow down the dates you plan on exploring the area. So when you're looking at your tide table, you can... Um, pinpoint the correct title information that you're going to need for the purpose of tip number four, identifying high and low tide based on the estimated height of the water and how it changes throughout the day. Keeping in mind that you could have multiple high and low tides uh, throughout any given day. So quickly to recap, uh, four tips for reading a tide table. First, you kind of want to gather an understanding of what exactly you're looking at on a tide table. So essentially, you're looking at daily predictions for the local times of low and high tides in a certain area, as well as the estimated heights of those, uh, those tides. Next, you'll want to pinpoint the correct title information for your designated area. A great place to start would be to look into the NOAA's online resource, Tide Predictions, as well as checking out your local bait shop, marina, or even apps you can download to your phone. Um, we'll typically have tide tables for more popular areas, whereas in more remote places you may need to uh, go stick with the old-fashioned route. Uh, third, when looking at a tide table and um, figuring out the information you need, you'll want to narrow down the dates you'll be exploring. So every tide is going to have a date next to it um, that will allow you to search for the correct information, whether you plan on exploring in the morning, afternoon, or evening. Um, and finally, you'll be able to identify high and low tides after um, following those previous tips based on the estimated height of the water displayed on those tide tables and how it changes throughout the day. Keep in mind that you can often have multiple high and low tides throughout a single given day. So um, I hope you found these useful. I'd love to hear any additional tips you might have on this subject or if one of these in particular was useful for you learning to uh, better use or start to use a tide table to add to your next outdoor paddling or backpacking adventure. Um, as always, leave any feedback or questions that you have in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like connecting with other outdoor enthusiasts, you should definitely consider checking out Summit. Summit is a social network that brings together adventure junkies from all around the world to exchange stories, share advice, and inspire each other. You might even make some new friends too. It's kind of like Facebook for outdoorsy people, but with better privacy, no ads, no spam, and tons of extras. 
You can join Summit by going to summit.theadventurejunkies.com or by clicking the link in the description below. You can find me in Summit too, so be sure to say hi when you join.